Hi everyone, Brian here again with Practical Prep TX. Today I'm going to make a video on how I have two dairy cows, basically a cow and a calf pair, and I keep them for the most part in a roughly 30 foot by 30 foot pen. So I don't have a lot of acreage out here. I mean, I do have 15 acres, but if you look around me here, you'll notice that it's really heavily wooded. I did clear some space back here behind my shoulder. You can see that a lot of brush piles to be burned, trees. Um, so we're gonna try and get them out into pasture more often than what we do, um, which is, we have maybe like a quarter acre of pasture right now. So we've been buying these round bales, uh, big thousand, 1100 pound round bales to feed them. But just wanted to show you, if you have small acreage, you can have your own dairy cows yourself. Um, albeit it's a little bit more work, which I'll go through that uh, here shortly. So why don't I just go ahead and give you a tour of the pen that I have here. So uh, let me see if I can uh, turn this around. All right, so here is a view of the pin we have here, and uh, I did this as cheap as possible. So I found all that metal. You can see it's rusted. I found all that on Facebook Marketplace for two dollars for all of it. He <laughs> just said, "Give me two dollars and take it off my property." So uh, that's that's awesome. That was a heck of a deal. Um, that stuff's pretty expensive if you have to buy it brand new. So, um, and also all the gates you see here, I got on Facebook Marketplace as well for about thirty or forty bucks each, roughly. Um, the cows, obviously the most expensive part. Uh, they run anywhere from about $4,000 to $6,000 a pair for a cow calf. If you want to do the A2, A2 uh, Jersey cows like I have here. Um, now in about, I don't know, it's probably gonna be a year and a half, we're gonna start selling uh, cow calf pairs because we don't have the infrastructure here to maintain them, but we're always doing AI every year, um, artificial insemination. Um, but eventually we want two, uh, two cows, which are these two here, which is Buttercup, that full, full size cow here. And you see her calf in the pen behind. That is Daisy. And uh, she's about seven months old now. We'll be doing artificial insemination in a little under a year from now. And right now, what is it? Early uh, 2023, February. So um, we got a ways before we're gonna have some cow calf pairs to sell, but we will do that probably beginning in 20, Gosh, I think it's gonna be early 2025. So still a few years away. So if you're watching this at that time, then you know feel free to reach out. We may have a cow-calf pair if you're in the uh, central Austin, Texas area, if you wanna do the same thing. Uh, but back to the structure I built here. So I just use pressure treated lumber and uh, I'll give you a little tour inside here. So obviously we have a water trough, but it is literally about uh, 30 feet from that corner to the back corner inside that, uh, little three-sided structure and then 30 feet from this corner here all the way to that back corner inside where you see the little calf um, so that's it we can keep them indefinitely in this if we wanted to um, it is work so every morning we actually come out here and milk them well actually just milk this big big uh, cow here named buttercup but we milk her once a day in the morning right around 8 8 30 a.m um, and that takes uh, yeah, really 10 minutes with the little machine we use, which I'll make a video on that here at some point. But it takes about 10 minutes to milk her. Um, and then we grab this little trash can here, as you can see, and we fill up uh, hay. So I fill up that trash can all the way, kind of stuffed as much as can fit in it. And I put it into her trough right there, feed trough every morning. Uh, I do the same thing. I only feed about maybe half that trash can size to the smaller calf. So I do that, and then right after I feed them, I just top off their water, make sure this water, which I'm gonna have to fill this one up maybe once a week, I top it off. Uh, but Daisy there, she just has a bucket for now, a five gallon bucket that we just fill up every day to make sure she has, actually twice a day. Um, and then after we feed them, we pick up the manure. So we have hay forks, you can kind of see them hanging on the wall back there with a couple shovels and we pick all of the manure up um, every day because if not it'll get too messy out here and then you start to run the risk of the cows getting sick worms and all that so that's what's more work out here if you're keeping them in a small pen like this is you do have to spend the extra five ten minutes a day just cleaning up the manure um, and it's not that bad <laughs> we literally put the manure in this little uh, wheelbarrow here and then we take it and we every morning we wheel the wheelbarrow over here you see my little electric fencing here. This is what I use to move the cows when we do put them in a little tiny pasture that we have up there, which only lasts a week. <laughs> um, but we stack all the manure up right here. 
and as you can see, if I had to estimate, it's all manure mixed with uh, the hay that they just toss out of their trough that they don't like. So they waste a lot of hay, but we have a pretty good mixture of 50% hay and 50% manure here. So, I mean, this is great compost. There's probably about 10 yards here, and this is maybe two months worth of manure and moving it over here every day just by hand. So again, just basically the whole round trip from when I start milking to when I'm done with the manure and everything and feeding them, it takes about an hour, a little less than an hour for me. So it is every morning <laughs> we got to do that. So there's some work. So maybe you have somebody who can help you or somebody you can share milk with. Um, I do. So that is a, a nice thing we have going out here. But yeah, you can hear Daisy screaming. She thinks I'm going to give her some alfalfa cubes, um, which I do uh, in the evening as well come out here and just top off their hay in the evening but uh, that really is the pin structure um, inside there I'm gonna try to zoom in I don't want to go inside but you see a little uh, stanchion well, that's where we milk her so a little wooden thing we can close her head into that way we just give her some alfalfa cubes while we're milking her she stays there quietly for the 10 minutes she's in there and really that's what we do that's how you can have your cows in here if you wanted to in a 30 by 30 pin now you do have to pick up these big round bales so you'll need someone to deliver it or if you have I have a 14 foot little high sided trailer that I have a contact that grows hay and right now these hay bales run about 100 120 bucks each and they last about a month for these two cows each one so we're going through about one of those a month so that's about a hundred and call 120 bucks for the hay for them and then I also Go through about four bags of the uh, 50 pounds of alfalfa, uh, just feeding them basically in there when I'm milking the buttercup. And I also throw uh, just a little bit, I don't know, maybe a pound or two of alfalfa cubes over there to uh, Daisy, who's back there in that back pen, just to I don't know, give him a little treat because right now the hay quality is not that good. This is Central Texas, and 2022 was a rough year for rain, so we are just about. <laughs> decimated in a drought out here so the hay went from 40 bucks a round bale that you see right there all the way up to now 120 so we are praying for rain uh, more rain this spring uh, so let me see on my notes here what else i had so that's how the pin works um, i went over how i feed them um, how we milk them and i'll do another video on the milking machine we use uh, but i get it at a place called hambry dairy products you can get them online um, and also if they're in a pen like this so they are around their manure which you know there's not a whole lot right now because we picked it up about four hours ago but you can still see some in here but because of that you got to be a little bit more careful on um, any bacteria they're going to be eating and they could get some sort of you know like worms which we do not inoculate for worms um, we do everything naturally here so what we use is diatomaceous earth and we sprinkle that on the alfalfa cubes we give them all the time and we have not had any issues and again i am not an expert at this i've been doing this about seven months now so uh, but we've had no issue with any of them getting sick though we do have uh, i've made contact before i got these cows uh, man she is screaming today um with a vet that's nearby just in case we do have somebody that we need to come out they'll come out here as a mobile vet and take care of them um, so that is how we do it out here um, you can do this on a 30 by 30 little plot if you wanted to. Again, you're looking at an hour, an hour in the morning and another 15 minutes in the afternoon or in the evening is what I do. Just top off their hay and make sure their water's topped off. And that's it. That's it. You can milk them once a day if you want. If you want to milk them twice a day, you can. Um, you'll get a little bit more milk, probably an extra quarter to a half gallon a day than the way I'm doing it. But I don't want to have to clean the milker in the evening. So I want my evenings to be mine, not uh, having to take care of these guys. So that's how I do it. This video, I had a couple final thoughts here. One was, uh, you can see uh, Daisy right behind me here with that little yellow uh, ring in her nose. Um, she's the calf and she is still trying to nurse uh, her mom over there, Buttercup. And she is now about uh, seven months old. And we've kept her separately in a pen over there. And, for months and still she's not weaning so we had to put that on her um so if you're wondering what that is that's what it is um but also i wanted to go over some economics real quick of this venture uh so we get about 
oh gosh, I've got my numbers here, 37 gallons a month of milk uh, from Buttercup, our one dairy cow over there, uh, of A2, A2 milk. And we were paying, before we had these cows, we were paying $8 a gallon for that um, here local in the uh, Austin area. And that's actually a good price, actually, in the Austin area for that. It goes as much as $20 a gallon, which is insane. Um, but at 30 days a month, that's $300 a month worth of milk that we're getting. Um, so I think I mentioned that the hay, the alfalfa, everything costs us about $200 a month to take care of these guys. Um, out the door, so, uh, and but that's not the only uh, benefit or product we get from these cows. So yeah, we got all, all our dairy covered, right? We can make our own milk, uh, cheese. Um, let's see, what else does my wife make uh, that I don't eat? Let's see, yogurt. Um, but also, because we keep them in this small pen and we shovel the manure out every morning, we uh, pile it, you can see that pile right behind me there that's hay, it looks like a big pile of hay. Well, that's hay and manure mixed together. And in 90 days, that turns into usable compost, natural compost that we can put on our garden. So that's one thing that I neglected to say um, in my last video, but I wanted to mention that. And that is, that pile over there is about 45 days worth. And it's about, it's between five and 10 yards. If you, you know, drag your truck down to the uh, local uh, dirt and soil place, they'll sell it for about $40 a yard. So, I mean, that's, that's between two and four hundred dollars worth um, in about 45 days. So when you look at the, our byproducts that we're getting from these cows, which is the milk at roughly three hundred dollars a month, and plus another couple hundred dollars in the manure, the compost, we're looking at five hundred dollars a month in usable materials, and it cost us roughly two hundred dollars a month in hay and alfalfa. Now, if we could get them out and graze on our property here, uh, we could bring that cost down. But for now, we have little tiny pasture. Um, and we're hoping to clear some trees and make more. But while keeping them in this 30 by 30 pin is not ideal necessarily, um, because you know if we had grass out here, we could graze them and keep our costs lower. It's doable and you do get the manure and the milk obviously. So um, again, well not ideal and you have a higher chance of them having some sort of bacterial diseases. You gotta be careful about maybe have a vet um, ready to go just in case. Um, it's doable. So that's what I wanted to say. Uh, well, thanks everyone. This one, video was a little longer than I wanted, but uh, had a lot of information. Hopefully you got something out of it. Please comment. I will look at the comments and answer questions there. Um, subscribe to this channel because it is new. I could use that help. And I've got some uh, links down there in the description on items I'm using to help myself be more self-sufficient, and they are affiliate links. So um, I'd appreciate it if you could help me out there. Thanks everyone.